Hello boxing fans, today a few people have messaged me and they've asked me could you tell me who your top few boxers are, this one said who's your top five boxers, where would you rank, Mike Tyson, other things like that have been asked. So today I thought I'll tell you my top ten boxers of the past 25 years. I've picked 25 years because anyone before that time, to be perfectly honest, I haven't watched that much of them. People like Muhammad Ali, I respect what he's done, I respect the guy, but he's passed, he's before my time period, well before my time period in fact, and just because of that it, I wouldn't do a, a good um, a good write up of him you might say, if you want to put it, put it like that. So before I give you, give you my top 10 I'm just going to tell you a little story about how I first got into boxing. My first ever interaction with boxing was when I was actually 11 years old. The boxing match I think was Chris Eubank, but I cannot remember who it was against so far back. But I do remember then running upstairs and playing on my Dreamcast, a boxing game that I had. Yeah, Dreamcast, old school. My next interaction with boxing was when I was 16 years old. And I was training in a gym with my school and one of the guys said I should have a look into a few of the gyms locally because he was on the pads with me at the time didn't do anything spectacular, he just said you might like it and I thought yeah I might do so I went down and had a look and I did later on when I was 17 I was on my first job and this was my first ever fight um, I was working in this chip shop and if you're from America don't know what chip shop is you're missing out anyway back to the story I was locking up with one of my friends his name was Memeth and basically there was three piss heads from across the road in the pub and basically they were off the face and they were lying in the they were actually one of them was lying down on the floor we chucked them out and as Memeth went to lock the door one of the guys booted the door smack into his face he ran outside and started having a fight with one I didn't know what to do at the time to be honest the adrenaline got the better I walked outside tried to break up the fight and then one of them grabbed me and started start to throw me about you gotta understand I was 17 years old and these guys were 26 easy and at the time I did not exactly know what to do this guy was coming straight at me and I socked him right in the jaw that was my first ever fight and you understand I didn't exactly know what to do I punched him with a left hook right to the jaw and he fell down luckily into the road and was very close to getting hit by a car actually um, then the chef came out with a baseball bat and they all ran away but that was one of the that was the first ever fight I had probably one of the scariest moments of my life pretty much as well especially because I was against someone seven years older than me I had about three stone on me but I think I did okay <laughs> never got hit back though so getting straight into the top ten now because I just realized three minutes have already gone um, yeah I'm going to tell you first of all when it turns up here we go firstly number ten Ricky the Hitman Hatton I've been to see Ricky Hatton fight twice the last fight I saw him get in was against Juan Lascano and I was there and it was a great match even though Ricky didn't stop him it was a good match and I enjoyed it so much I've never known anyone to have to take so many boxers with him no matter where every fights number nine is Iron Mike Tyson the best thing I can say about Mike Tyson was speed killed he used his speed his head movement his, his lateral movement everything was good until he went to jail and then pretty much after jail he was done he became out too stocky too big, he'd lost a lot of speed, he didn't have his normal trainer um, overall after that he was finished for me number eight Prince Nazim, everyone loved Prince Nazim anyone who says they did not love Prince Nazim is lying <laughs> he had the mouth, he had the, he had the boxing ability he was one of the most underrated boxers in the world I honestly believe that people such as Eric Morales never fought him just because they knew it would have been really hard Barrera, all time great, beat him. Nazim should have stuck around afterwards, but he never has. He keeps saying he might have a comeback, but he never does. Number seven, Roy Jones Jr. Another guy, speed kills. I'm a man of speed, me, and this guy came forward. He landed his punches. His punches were hard, and he was fast. Number six, now, Chris Eubank. Simply the best. You cannot beat Chris Eubank. Unfortunately, his era was the was the era of the um, the British middleweights, and he'd missed out on Roy Jones Jr. by about 
I think 10 years if it would have been a brilliant match Roy Jones Jr. versus Chris Eubank in, pr in their prime Roy Jones prime Chris Eubank prime at middleweight that would have been a brilliant boxing match number five Arturo Gatti Gatti was the man with the chin he was a great boxer great fighter he had a good amateur record as well everything about Arturo Gatti was just spelt out money he, he was just brilliant you can't he, no one can diss Arturo Gatti rest in peace number four is Eric Morales I've got to say I love Eric Morales he's an absolute legend he's took over the whole of the Mexican nation he beat everyone who was re who was there the only person he's not for is um, Juan Manuel Marquez and that would that would have been a good fight back in the day and it was even better more recently to watch Eric Morales fight and probably win and I think he could have won that fight against Marcos Maidana it just showed that the young gun was so much was was not so much better than the old mastermind and I think one of the best things I can say about Eric Morales is that to leave you with him before going into the top three is this quote from one of the American commentators the old warrior is showing the young gun a trick about head speed okay number three now Nigel Ben the dark destroyer everyone has to like Nigel Ben he couldn't jab right his movement wasn't great but what he did give you was unbelievable heart and determination and one hell of a lot of power he always just found the way and in his pivotal match he, he did beat Gerald McLaren who was I think he was pound for pound number two at the time it, but after that fight I think Nigel left a lot of him in that ring with Gerald to be honest and it's good to see that, that Nigel Ben has become such a good character after boxing and that he's trying to help Gerald McLaren as much as he can Moving on now to number two, and this is the late, great Edwin Valero. I obviously cannot condone a man who beat his wife to death. Really, I can't, but he was a mastermind in the ring. The guy set traps for his opponent. Some of his traps was he, he'd leave one of his hands low to so the person seeing it, and they were coming in to attack. Now, on that time, it was a definite trap because he always used to have his quicker hand speed and his unbelievable power and landed great combinations on the inside sometimes he didn't even have to have a combination sometimes he'd just take one big punch and he'd be down a brilliant match that I'd have loved to have seen would have been Edwin Valero moving up to 140 pounds fighting Manny Pacquiao or if I can't have Manny Pacquiao imagine him against Marcus Maidana that would be a glorious bloodbath and now my number one of the last 25 years was Joe Calzaghe you see Joe Calzaghe was one of the most underrated boxers I think in the super middleweight division he beat everyone who they put in front of him he even in the twilight years of his career went away and fought his biggest matches on his opponent's hometown and he still came away with the victory even if one of them was controversial I don't know how the people can moan it's controversial because obviously Bernard had the home advantage he also had the referee advantage but I've got to just say Joe Calzaghe is one of the best and I think right now he would be more than a match for anyone in the super middleweight division at all. One of the matches I, I just wish that I could have seen before he retired would have been Carl Froch versus Joe Calzaghe. That would have been an awesome match and an absolute bloodbath. Thanks for listening guys. Thanks for listening guys. I just want to say, post your top 10 in the comments section. Um, don't try and change my opinion on the, my favourite fighters because it clearly will not work. After all, it is just my opinion.